to become an imitator of his concept, which was wrong for you in the first place. You never built the nation state. The nation state is un-African. The African built the territorial state. Several states within the state, several cultures within the culture, several religions within the culture, not at war with each other, but challenging each other, fertilizing each other, stimulating each other. The European country put all of these entities formally functioning together against each other so he could conquer both. When we fell for these fake toys of foreigners and neglected our own laws of morality, we were in a trick bag we hadn't gotten out of to this very day. We started running from the concept of being an African people. And right now, you have that integration, integrated mind, people who bought that bag of ones. <coughs> I don't see color, I just see you queen. <laughs> yeah, try to get a cab, maybe not. A cab dollar, oh, you know, he, that's the only thing the captain ever sees cover. <laughs> you see y'all, y'all do the sign of the Lord. <laughs> you're so generous to them, you don't understand how ungenerous they are to you. Everybody who makes it in this world have to look in the mirror and see themselves and say with absolute sincerity, like what I see. <laughs> if you like what you see, you will protect what you see. You will protect the offsprings of what you see. You will protect the manhood and the womanhood of what you see. And you will not let a power structure take you over that can declare war on your manhood and your womanhood, especially your manhood, to destroy the most effective thing you had before those long invasions, that is the family structure as nation, the community as nation. You had internal security within the nation. People didn't go to some long civil courts, and yet with trial and justice, as who would be head of the Supreme Court? Well, it might be your grandma or you. Without a single trained civil lawyer, we had some of the finest justice ever administered to you would be. Why have you forgotten all of this? You come down today looking at their justice system and asking their justice system to be just to you when it wasn't even developed for you. <laughs> it was developed to trap you and to hold you and to contain your manhood and your womanhood. Because if your manhood and your womanhood had full flower, you would understand what you were supposed to do with education. You would not bring a nation into being, parade around as a president, when most of the land in the nation is owned by the foreigner who controls the gold, the diamonds, and all the mental wealth. South Africa controls most of the gold in the world and got one gold specialist black. Most of the diamonds in the world have got one professional trained black diamond brother. See, instead of a whole lot of waste of education on yourself, it don't mean nothing. Study management, it don't manage nothing, not even yourself. <laughs> Why don't we go?
direct people in the serial study of memories. Why are we so shy in the teaching of mathematics? Why are we talking about mathematics being hard when the blacks who built the pyramids must have been harder for them? You'll be still up there, six thousand years. They saw problems in algebra, geometry, basic math. The fight right now on black teachers, especially teachers like Lonnie of Shabazz in Atlanta. The fight now is to remove black mathematics teachers from all black schools because the road to mathematics is the road to industrialization. And how can they monopolize the industry in your country? If you know how to do it, you put them out of business. And with your own mind, you can do that. Mathematics is not so difficult. It's a part of life. Every time you drink of water, you drink water as part of mathematics. You, take some, you walk from the table to the door, that's part of mathematics. How many steps it took? How many steps did it take to get back? How many steps to get halfway? Go to the supermarket, you buy so many oranges. You leave so many oranges. All this is part of mathematics. It, it's part of your life like breathing. It's the queen of the sciences. Why am I getting way out on this limb when I'm talking about the injustice of African men and women? And why he won a ceremony and lost the war? The ceremony was called the Civil Rights Movement in America, the Caribbean Federation Movement in the Caribbean, and the African Independent Explosion in Africa. It was a wonderful ceremony. We lost, we won the ceremony, we lost the war. Because when men like Nkrumah and Padmore start advocating a world union of African people, a connection between all the African people and the earth, so that they could be supportive of each other. The ending of the nonsense about we being a minority and calling attention to the fact that in the Western world alone, South America, the United States, the Caribbean Islands, there are 300 million African people. There's 750 million in Africa. There's over 100 million people of African extraction India, whole African nations in the Pacific, put all of us together. We number over a billion people. Farrakhan goes to Libya, and Libya offers him a billion dollars building a line between Islam. Arabs and Africans in the world. That's less than a dollar a piece. <laughs> and you're grinning and you're black. It's the biggest insult. <laughs> and who authorized you to go there in the first place? I was to march with him on Washington and he marched with me against the Arab embassy, against the Arab slave trade. Rapping all over yeah. Why are we going out on this limb to come back to a local case? Because there is no local case. All cases are part of a large international case to control the mind and the bodies of African people all over the world and to keep African people from claiming a piece of territory 
the richest on earth, a country called, a continent called Africa, nearly 12 million square miles. Why are you homeless in the world with a home so big and so rich? Because you have not trained yourself, your men and your women, to handle the mental wealth of that country. Until you handle the wealth and the resources of your respective country, until you use that as a means of forcing consideration and justice, you will not understand how I mean that you can reach a point in power for a telephone call and get a man off death row. You won't reach that point until you control enough of the resources that your resources make a difference between profit and loss, win or lose for other people, then you can bring national pressure on nations and circumstances and get serious respect for having done so. Now, the last work that I'm finishing is called Pan-Africanism of Terror. I maintain that you've already tried capitalism that came into being from the profit of the slave trade. That didn't work. Some of us have tried communism. We discovered that it's just another part of the overall European scheme to control the mind of Africa and the resources of Africa. That didn't work. You tried all, you tried that Christianity. That didn't deliver. Islam was still in the slave trade, was in the slave trade before, before the Arabs were in the slave trade before Islam. So that's no solution. Then what is the solution? Coming together as a people, irrespective of religion, political affiliation, or association, one African people speaking with a single voice in the power arena of the world can change it all, and it's not going to be changed until you do it. You can play all kind of games with all kind of ism. You can shout that line to you. Get the cold. <laughs> Nobody. You can say all kind of Christian prayer. And with the deep Western religion, not gonna do it. The Eastern ones not gonna do it either. The Hindu faith, based on the caste and color, but well, they believe in the sacred cow. Not the second human being. I'm saying most people's religion, most people's politics, most people's societies are built to protect themselves. Why are you so afraid to be partial to yourself? Why are you so non-partisan? I can't see the color. I just all feel that you would be something. Yeah. 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 Your enemy don't think that food. <laughs> well then, nearly all the black colleges, especially the state colleges, are being integrated on an executive level. Why are all these bad teachers being dumped into black colleges? Teachers who couldn't get jobs other way. Teachers who can't even handle the English language. They can dump their doctors into our university. And they take what they call the finest among us, mostly conservatives like Louis Gates, that crowd of professional 
by the banana kissing. <laughs> They swear by them, the red reason, the power struggle. They are servants of our enemy. And they are no friends of us. You're going to build a national structure that will take away and destroy the wall that's been declared on our manhood and our womanhood. It's bigger than just the Panthers. In the first place, we not only got to get the history of our relationship to the world straight, we got to get the history of the Panthers straight. This was not an urban movement. This was a rural movement. Starting in Lyons County, Alabama. The voter registration movement. Some of the young people in Oakland adopted the symbols and literally dropped the Alabama movement out of history. Now, this movement, voter registration, upward mobility and education would have been more successful than the urban movement. Good in many of its intent, stated intentions, but sometimes misguided in some of their actions, especially toward black women. <laughs> if they knew history, they would know that we came out of a society where we did not argue equality between ourselves and women. And that a man was too intelligent to say he's superior to his mother. So the concept of man superiority of a woman didn't start with us. It started with people who had already reduced women to bastards. And we forgot to understand we were the first people on this earth to see a woman ride at the head of her army. <laughs> to see head of state. To see a woman declare a God. <laughs> When you began to imitate them, you began to downgrade what had made your society so great. If you read Sheik Antonio's work, The Cultural Unity of Black Africa, over a third of the book is devoted to the history of the matrimony how it developed in the world, how religions developed around it, how in all of his research, he found no wife beating, no wife deserted, no teenage pregnancy. The man had so much respect for his mother, he would prostrate himself at the door of his mother and would not rise until she tapped him on the shoulder and says, rise precious fruit of my womb, accept my blessings. For today. In this society, in an African society, you could not punish a man, I mean, put him to death in capital punishment. If you sentence him to capital punishment, and if his mother fails to participate in the ceremony of killing him, he could not, by that justice, be killed. Because the one who brought him into the world has the right to take him out. <laughs> All of this was happening while women in Europe were vaccinated. 
literally slave. When she began to think and express opinion, they began to put her as a witch. Now you were going to imitate them in relationship to your own women. I was asked to give a lecture on the historical origins of black teenage pregnancy to a social group. And they came all meat down, perfume down. They hear me hang the black man to the cross. I didn't even mention the black man. They didn't even mention it. There was no teenage pregnancy in Africa before the coming of farmers. There were no men impregnating women and deserting them before the coming of farmers. Because your lady's choice of a husband and her ability to choose one was built into the society itself. Therefore, there was no single woman after a certain age. There was no prostitution. It was all built into the society. If a girl is single, a boy is single, the old lady see if their personality would match. And if their respective family can get along. And so it was not about I love you, but I respect you. If there's any difficulty, she had a support system, uncle, aunt, he had a support system, and he will not go insane enough to think he's gonna, gonna strike her. Because before he get his hands up, he got to think, can I deal with it? Fifty thousand. Right. <laughs> because when you marry a woman in this society, you do not marry a single woman. You marry into a family. And that certain thing, the family is going to let it happen because it brings dishonor to both. Now your family is going to get on you because by striking her, you bring dishonor to your family. Look at all the things you got to think about before you even get your hand. <laughs> I was in Ethiopia. Some white women complaining about the Ethiopian woman needs rights under the law. The Ethiopian woman needs her civil rights. Gene Selassie. Selassie has been common in Ethiopia. Let Smith here. And um, Gene Selassie. He's a professor, he is a man and she is a button. One of the clothes, little women, you know, she can't get your eyes off.
Better do the right thing. See, what I'm talking about, we came into a structured society where our debasement, injustice was built into the society itself because after people finished using us for slavery, they became afraid of us and our potential. They know we can learn fast when we put our minds to it. We can do more than just run fast, waste enough energy on a dance floor to build tent city. <laughs> If we directed our creative energy in the right direction, yeah. we learn something about how to choose leaders and how to dismiss them. Yeah. People don't come up and say they're a leader. What qualifies you to say that you're my leader? Yeah. We sent for you in the first place. <laughs> our enemy knows but we don't seem to know. We have not asked the simple question, leader, where are you leading me? A leader is a messenger, a people's messenger. He gets the message to the people from the people and delivers the message. 1957, with the independence of Ghana and the call for a unified African world, our enemies declared war on our manhood and our womanhood. They declared war on the black child in the classroom. A creative and an active Black child is a child where the teacher has not found a way to use his creative energy. She could direct him into the sciences. She could direct him into carpentry. She could direct him into all kinds of inquiry. But instead of that, They give him some medicine to keep him calm, which destroys his mind and his incentive. And we set back with the Baptist Church, 14 million people right there. Fourteen million people. They barely own a Shushan stand. What have we done with our energy and our power? Why are people smaller than we done so much more than we in the protection of our selves? They know how to consolidate power and they know how to use power. All the Jewish people in the world are less than one half of the black population in the United States. They get more support for Israel than all of the black nations in the world put together. Maybe 60 or 70, 52 in Africa alone. They know how to handle power and pressure. We're afraid to hurt somebody. <laughs> Tell the truth, Doctor. Tell the truth. We should deliver the hurt anybody. <laughs> if they stand in our just role, power, and security, shame on you. <laughs> we need to tap them on, tap them on the shoulder and say, you come in my way, you come. And if they don't move, you have to pay the price of that stomach. <laughs> but you got to have back up. You got to know to do what other people have already done. They've infiltrated the courts. They've infiltrated the justice system. That's right. 
And we want to let us get and just take out all kind of networks that you did not build because you didn't think you needed them. It is clear that war has been declared first and foremost on the manhood of black women. Caribbean America, and Africans in general. There's a single independent state in Africa, the imitation European state, because the European was careful to remove from their mind the memory of what they did when they were free of European domination. Now, what do I mean in conclusion about? and Africanism of Paris. If you have an option to African world unity, tell me what it is. You tried these other things that didn't work. There's a book called The Tribes that tells how all the different ethnic groups in the world except the African is claiming a piece of turf in the world. Why are we not claiming a piece of turf in the world? Because the mass movies, step and fetch it, all the bad images of Africa, Jungle Gym and Tarzan, it made us contemptuous of a home that could be our power base in the world for all time. Because you have no other home in the world. Whatever you are on the face of this earth, you are an African people. You have gone down the capitalist road only to be the servants of capitalism. You've gone down the communist road only to be used by it to aggrandize their power and their that aspiration was no different from other Europeans, is to control the world by any means necessary. You've gone down these roads. You've gone down every religious road you can think of. Holy Roller, Jehovah's Witness, everybody. You give them all the chance to have the liberty. Now what if you've got that? If you're gonna marshal the kind of power that will get out of men, out of jail, start a whole new way of life, new concept of humanity. What other way other than African world union can you do it? What other way other than the martial of the, of the talent of all African people to serve African people wherever they are on the face of the earth? What other way of taking your nose out of the air and stop snubbing each other based on sororities and fraternities and learn that none of these things are <laughs> There is no such thing as a Greek fraternity or sorority. <laughs> The whole thing was taken from African secret society. You hear back, so I'm a Greek. Black fool, you had something better than you. <laughs> when will we stop imitating other people and imitate the best of ourselves? Somewhere in the march of life. We made the wrong turn at the fork of the road. We went the wrong way. And we have to come back to that fork of the road in the road and read the sign for us one more time. And when you read a sign board that says African unity, pan-Africanism, the unification and the protection of African people all over the world, not to be against other people, but to be for something. First and foremost, to be for themselves in the building of a new humanity. <coughs> Once you step back in order to step forward and reread the direction that people have to go in 
They're going to save themselves from the domination of other people. The direction of the essential selfishness of survival. The direction that leads you to be in command of the entry and the exit to your country. To be the masters of the wealth of your country. You cannot do this fighting among yourself and distinguishing among yourself who's a Muslim, who's a Christian. Doesn't matter, neither one of you are free. <laughs> we can give people as we did. That's the value of studying and living in Africa. And studying. the territorial concept of the state as against the nation state with its tight borders. Africans getting passports to go visit other Africans who less than a block away who's his country. His country is split up by some colonials. All Africa has to be one. Different territories, different borders, all of them having access to each other, stimulating each other. If you study migration movements in Africa, as I have, sometimes Africans get a little tired of where they are and go visit another group of Africans for 10 years, and some stay 100 years, then move on to something else. No fight. But the European, came in and put one against the other and ended up conquering both. The greatest achievement of the European was the conquest of the African mind. <laughs> there wasn't enough Europeans in the world to take over Africa, India, other parts of the world. They didn't have enough soldiers for this. They had to get African a kickback, led by their missionaries. They had to make them believe less in themselves and more in foreigners. Once we discard this false code of protection, go back into that fork on the road and find a sign saying Pan-Africanism, African World Union, Move down that road, we'll be then on our way back home, ready to build new humanity. And remember, if we build the first humanity, we can build the last. But you cannot change the world until at first you change yourself. Thank you.
Dr. Clark will be signing books. In the outer lobby, his books are on sale, so he will be signing books for those of you who would like to get that. Also, to make you aware, I'm wearing a button, and there are several of them. The occasion we're gathering today in, su in support of Marshall Eddie Conway. There are buttons in the lobby on sale. The picture of Brother Marshall Eddie Conway, these are only $3 and will go toward the support, the defense fund for Brother Marshall Eddie Conway. There are also petitions in the lobby, petitioning for his probation and also for a new trial. So please, there's also information in the lobby about other political prisoners and hopefully we'll have a chance to make a few comments before um, we get out of the uh, venue. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for your presentation, Dr. Brown. I'm quite sure you're aware of the Hittites and Canaanites and other ice in the Bible. Uh, I'm quite sure you're aware of the Hittites and the Canaanites in the Bible. Uh, are these fictitious characters of the Bible? If so, would you expound on that, please? The Hittites and the Canaanites? And all the rest of the ice. The Canaanites. The Canaanites were the occupiers of what is now Palestine. <coughs> they occupied it long before the Arabs and long before the early Hebrews. You talk about the early Hebrews, we're not talking about white people at all. The Hebrews of Europe, who are white people, who became white people, or declared themselves white people, would be later converts to the faith. So I want to make a clear distinction of who, who we're talking about. I'm talking about people of Hebrew faith, but they were not what we now call Jews. They were people from Western Asia, of the Hebrew faith in Western Asia was mixed in color. And Christ was born in that area, so therefore he had to be mixed in color. Now you talk about the other one. Now the Hittites were those people from Western Asia who invaded Africa in 1675 after the Hebrew migration into Africa in the 1700s, in the 1600s, uh, he invaded and the Hebrews who had come in through migration came the servants of the Hittites. And this is why once the African broke the back of the Hittites, he had, he, uh, he told the servants, you too will have to go. Now that's, you might have heard a whole lot of stories about the Exodus, but uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful story. <laughs> Put emphasis on the word story. <laughs> because uh, they walked into, uh, into Africa over land bridge that was 16 miles long. And they could have walked out this long before they built the Suez, Suez Canal. Many, most of these uh, ites people uh, enemies of Africa. I'm not saying this was the Canaanites, but the Canaanites were, were African people who occupied the land that the Hebrew people uh, took over. In fact, the, the people of the Hebrew faith in Western Asia never had any homeland that they didn't take from someone else. Are there any evidence of the Amorites and Edomites? Or the what not? Amorites and Edomites. Are there any evidence of those characters? They, well, that, those are names in retrospect we, we use, but I think uh, sometimes we're talking about the same people, sometimes we're talking about uh, a mixture of people. People make a mystery out of the Bible, but the Bible is really no great mystery. It's a piece of spiritual folklore and fable. And it's an interesting folklore and fable, and it, it illustrates a lot of true stories. What we go wrong is when, if the true story that it illustrates, the truth gets across, the as true, the illustration need not be true. Because, oh, and let me show you what I'm talking about. Noah is going to gather all the animals in the world, one little boy. At that time, the history boat was about the size of your living room. One medium-sized elephant would have sunk the boat. <laughs> one 
giraffe with a Nazi towel on the coat. <laughs> One black leopard with a German everybody also. <laughs> well, I haven't got the snakes on yet. I haven't got the skunks on who have stuck up the hole. Still haven't got them on. So the story is interesting. But faith and rescue. But don't be silly enough to accept that it's true. It was supposed to be true. It's supposed to be an illustration of, of faith. It doesn't matter too much whether Christ calmed the waves or calmed the sailors. The waves won't calm anyway, one sooner or later. He just calmed the sailors. That, that's it's, it's a great story of old way. Here's a, here's, a, here's, a, here's a story from the Bible that is great if you take it with the spirituality, take it without it. It's still a great story. If all he did was to calm the sailors, because if they're running around, they want something for them. That's an achievement. That's, that's a fine lesson in faith. If all he did was just to calm the sailors, nature calmed the waves. Sooner or later, you're going to do that anyway. But you, the main thing is, you keep cool. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Clark. Yeah. I'm honored to stand before you and pose a question. I'd like to thank you in advance for your response. My question is, what is your prognosis for the state of our race? Right now, if we don't stop, a whole lot of ceremony would have no substance. We will go permanently into servitude for other people. No one has planned our freedom or cares about it. If we don't do it, it's not going to be done. The Asians are now looking at Africa, covenant islands. And they are willing to join the Europeans in taking it. The Arabs who never had any good intention toward us, they are right now. They are trying to get a car dog through the Sudan to the riches of Southern Africa. And we're hailing Allah and all that stuff and quite forget it. All religions are power based. All religions are male shoulders, murder cults. And you can have a good spiritual way of life without being enemy of yourself. We are true believers. We out poke the poke and out and hammer and hammer. Show us the truth and run like a thief in the night. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think if we don't get ourselves soon, and I don't see no way showing Pan African unity, I think we'll become under the vassalage, under the servitude of another people. We'll reduce the servitude for other people. I, I think the age will do it just as good as as the Europeans. I don't think there's no people out there in any way so far, right now. Good evening, Dr. German Clark. My slave name is Randolph Scott. May I have permission to speak, sir? I'm not hearing you. My slave name is Randolph Scott. May I have permission to speak? Yeah. What is your opinion on the Billion Man's March, and where should we go from here? Well, I would right. first want to say a month before the march it was a ceremony of waste of time and a prayer con con game. <laughs> Nothing has happened to make me change my mind one iota. There has been no great change in the community because if the Million Man March was true to what it said, two weeks after the march, there would be one crack deal of teeth, single black. I resent the fact that over three billion dollars was taken up at the march, not a common I resent the fact that Farrakhan went on a nationwide tour. White crew six. Entourage of 30, staying classy hotel, 
The closest thing he visited in Africa resembled a rabbit coat. When have been dug? The doctors and Alvin Pyramus who wanted to use this on the colonization of the South, and subsequently that corridor called the Sudan. He visited with Iran. If you knew history, you would know that the last great invasion of Africa from Western Asia came from Iran. 550 BC. These invaders were so ruthless, Africans cried out, Oh God, if you cannot send me a liberator, send me a conqueror who will show me some mercy. That opened the door for a superior European invasion on the Alexander sometime called the Great. Where I come to a poor student of history. He's much better Baptist than he's a Muslim. <laughs> you know, a bad degree of accuracy. You like another favorite called Melania Karenga. No more gave you quantum than he gave you air. <laughs> Got a color problem and an ego problem. And you don't suppose to say things like this to the people. The ring is a proven police and bombs. It's all documented. Craig Khan has always had a fascination for his. Light skin. He's made a number of speeches showing you that, trying to prove that people with dark complexion without them features are cursed by some mistake <laughs> bad. I don't accept any of this. I don't feel cursed mean. I'm a part of what my mother and father made me. And if I got the nice, African coloring, I dig it, I wear it well. <laughs> I will not offend them by changing my color or wanting to change. I'm what they made of me, and I'm grateful and respectful. I resent having African people divided based on color gradation. When we left Africa, came we were all black. And all those who came from other color arrived at it in some form of rape some time ago or presently. Nothing we need to feel too proud of. They might also be nothing we could have prevented given our circumstances, but it's surely nothing to boast about. The white man has found no place in his society <coughs> for his bastard offspring. And they have to realize they're going to make it with us, but they're not going to make it at all. They want to go and knock on the door of the white farm. They got out of the courage to do something. <coughs> something gone, nothing missing.
And a lot of times I constantly, you know, tell people that come in the store that us as African people, we have a long way to go. But after yesterday, I really realized that we have a long way to go. Because after they left out the mall, everyone in the whole mall clapped. As though it was funny. One of their children got hit, they would not have thought so. Also, um, I said my name as of now is Chantal Parker because I feel it's necessary for myself, first and foremost, to change my name. The name that I have chosen is Nubia Hakima. Uh, we sell a book called um, Swahili Book of Names, and that's where I had gotten the name Hakima, and the book is stated that it meant the seeker of wisdom. And um, I would like to know if it's possible if you can give me a brief history of the Swahili language and how it came to existence, because I'm constantly criticized being stated that it's an Arabic name. And also, I would like to know if it's possible if you can give me a brief history. Swahili is not a language. Swahili is a language of Franco. It's a mixture of several languages. The Arab is only one element in it. And it's a convenient language like Hausa in northern Nigeria. It's a mixture of a northern language and a local Nigerian language, Igbo and Yoruba. The purest African, African, African language in West Africa is Ula, a can. These languages are not mixed with other. The accents are mixed, but the words are as pure as they ever were. The Mende languages in, in West Africa are pure languages. We have to distinguish between a trader's language. A language of Franco was generally created by a trader. <laughs> Traders in different regions speak different languages, speak one language that all of them can understand. That's how Swahili came to be. There's a lot of Arabic words in it, but there is a, a, a Swahili in the Congo area where they speak Lingala. But there is a thing that has no Arabic word. That is really the basis of what they call Key Swahili. That's the Swahili without the abundant Arabic word. I resent a lot of name Arab Simon because sometimes you choose the name of Arab slave traders. <laughs> Both of about it. I, I, I took this up with Muhammad Ali because the, the real Muhammad Ali was, was a slave trader. <laughs> but there are good Muslim African names. Sometimes we jump too soon. No. My name is John Henry Clark. I've traveled all over Africa. I've studied that culture, the court system, and people ask me, why have you changed your name? I have three legitimate African names. I've been officially installed by the Akan people, twice by the God people, each with a separate royal name. I wear my African ceremonies, certain ceremonies, and I engage in certain ceremonies. I'm the God mentor for the God people of Ghana. I mean, the senior chief. I don't parade this around, but so many opponents are having African minds, African names. People ask me, why did you change your name? I said, I did something better. I changed my mind. <laughs> when I came to the new 30 of the chief building, he's also done a, uh, a book on African names based on the Ghanaian uh, customer. The child must have at least one part of his name must indicate the date of the week in which he was born. No matter what else, the other parts of the name. One part of that. My own son, Sony Kojo. 
Sony's after Sony of the, of the, of the Sangi Empire called you male child born on Tuesday. My daughter is named Nzinga, after the warrior queen of Matambo that the Portuguese later called Angola. She's a film editor and uh, she went to an international middle class Ivy League school, so she got friends all over Europe. So she's now editing a film in Dutch. She knows enough Dutch to do that. I'll be going to London on the 24th and she will come over for a weekend or a little chit chat and see me. And to also chat me for maybe five hundred or more. <laughs>
we probably can't tell one black person from another one sometimes. So we talked and talked. The Federation failed. We went out and got drunk. So it's maybe until we got tired and we let's stop paying the food and realize what really happened is that the British have put all of us into a big bag. And uh, the British are experts in setting up nations to fall apart. Eric Williams, uh, when he discovered how much oil he had, you know, was going along with 